Today's topic is multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a chronic immune-related disorder of the central nervous system, brain, and spinal cord. In this condition, the immune system attacks myelin, which is the protective sheath that covers the nerve fibers leading to a diminished communication between the brain and the rest of the body. Eventually, the nerves themselves can deteriorate or be permanently damaged. Multiple sclerosis is the most common immune-related condition affecting the central nervous system. About 2.3 million cases were recorded in 2015, with 18,900 deaths. The onset of this condition is usually between the ages of 20 and 50. Women are about twice more likely as men to develop the condition. Multiple sclerosis may result in complications, such as epilepsy, paralysis, depression, muscle stiffness. There are different types of multiple sclerosis, such as clinically isolated syndrome, or CIS, that involves one episode of symptoms lasting for at least 24 hours. Relapse remitting MS, or RRMS, is the most common form, affecting around 85% of people with the condition. In this type, patients have relapses of the disease, followed by remission. You may have attacks when your symptoms flare up, followed by a period of recovery when you have few or no symptoms. Primary progressive MS, or PPMS, is not very common and accounts for about 10% to 15% of all cases. In this type, the symptoms worsen progressively from the onset, with no relapses or remission. Secondary progressive MS, or SPMS. In this type, symptoms worsen more steadily over time, with or without the occurrence of relapses and remissions. Causes. The exact cause of the condition is unknown. It is an autoimmune disorder in which the body's immune system attacks its own healthy muscles, cells, and tissues. In the case of multiple sclerosis, the immune system malfunction destroys the fatty substance that insulates and protects nerve fibers in the brain and spinal cord, myelin. When myelin is damaged and the nerve fiber exposed, nerve fibers can break down or become damaged. As a result, the electrical impulses from the brain do not flow smoothly to the target nerve. The nerve may also become damaged itself. Why this happens is not really clear, but it is believed that a combination of genetic and environmental factors may be responsible. Factors that may increase your risk of developing the condition include age, sex, ethnicity. People of Northern European descent are at a higher risk of developing the condition. Infectious agents such as Epstein-Barr virus that cause infectious mononucleosis. A family history of the condition. Smoking. Climate. The rate of the condition is higher in people who live in countries with temperate climates, including Canada, New Zealand, Europe, etc. Symptoms. Vision problems, including double vision, a partial or total loss of vision, or red-green color distortion. This usually affects one eye at a time. Dizziness. Fatigue. Tingling or weakness. Bladder dysfunction. Bowel dysfunction. Changes in emotional health, such as depression, mood swings, irritability. Sexual dysfunction, such as erectile dysfunction. Tremor. Slurred speech. Paralysis. Muscle spasm. Problems with swallowing. Ataxia, or difficulties with coordination and balance. Acute or chronic pain. Difficulty thinking. Diagnosis and treatment. There are no specific tests to make a diagnosis. Doctors make diagnosis by a patient's history, a neurological exam, tests such as MRI, lumbar puncture, a small sample of fluid is removed from the spinal cord for laboratory testing, and evoked potential testing, measures electrical signals produced by the nervous system in response to stimuli. Other tests, such as blood tests, may be carried out to rule out other diseases with symptoms similar to MS. Treatment. There is no cure for MS, but treatment options focus on suppressing the autoimmune response and managing symptoms. Medications such as corticosteroids, glatiramir acetate, beta interferon, natalizumab, alemtuzumab, 
rehabilitation, such as physical therapy, speech and swallowing therapy, vocational rehabilitation, and cognitive rehabilitation, muscle relaxants, plasma exchange, which may be used if symptoms are new, severe, and haven't responded to steroids. Thank you for watching our video. Please do not forget to like and share the video. Also, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our latest videos.